Hello everyone, the Senpai Code here. For today's lesson, I figured we'd go over quickly how to use Slurp, what is it, how do we implement it in our game. First, let's go over the description of Slurp. Slurp is basically like Lerp, but instead of a linear line, we're going to be using an angle between the two points, the two positions, the vector 3a and the vector 3 position. Then we're going to have our distance, which is our float t, which I like to think of as the time that's going to take getting between those two. We're going to be changing this around quite a bit, but basically you're going to have a transform that's going to be your start position, which they have as the sunrise, and then you're going to have one as the end position, which they have the transform as a sunset. And you're going to have the time, the journey time, uh, from where it's going to be moving between the sunrise and the sunset, point A and point B. And then you're going to have a private float start time. Uh, we may add another one in here. I'm going to be switching this around, so I'm not going to go over all of that at the moment let's jump into unity and check what we're going to be doing here we are in unity i'm going to show you guys two different ways that we can actually use the slurp script so we can use it as a enemy a bouncing enemy that's going to be bouncing between the two positions the a and b position we can actually change the direction that he actually hops or moves we can actually go left or right or underneath just by changing the new vector three number which i'll go over in a second and then the other way would be to use it as a cannonball that's actually just going to be shooting from the A to the B position and just repeating from A to B rather than ping-ponging back and forth between the two positions. And if we actually jump here and I actually sit here, I will actually take damage. So I took damage uh, just to show you guys that it actually works. But uh, we'll get into that later on. Let's uh, check out the script. So we'll go over the cannonball script first. You will have a public transform the cannonball start position, so the A position, and you will have the transform B position, which is the cannonball end position where it's going to be landing. And we will have a public float speed so that we can actually change the number if we want to, and then a public float journey length. And that's going to be the distance between the number. If we increase it, then it's going to go slower. We'll have it start out as 1F for now. And then the start time, we'll have that as a private since we don't really need to mess around with it. And then I do have a public bool loop so that we can actually loop the cannonball so it doesn't just shoot one and land where it's shot. So I did put a loop here and I will be starting it off as true rather than false. Nothing in the void start and then in the void update we have an if not loop. Then we do have the vector3 center equals the cannonball start position plus the cannonball end position uh, times 0.5. So that will be the center will be between those two numbers there. And then we do have a center uh, minus equals new vector three zero one zero. So here is a vector three start uh, relative center rel equals relative. If you're wondering what uh, REL stands for. And that equals the cannonball start position minus the center. And then the vector three end relative center equals the cannonball end dot position minus the center. So float frac complete equals time dot time minus the start time and then outside the brackets we have it divided by the journey length times the speed. Next we have the transform dot position equals vector three dot slurp. Then we have the a, the b, and then the speed. So we have the start relative center, the end relative center, and then the frac complete which is our journey length uh, it's right here and that's how it's figuring out the time or the distance that it needs to go and the amount of time it needs to do it. Then we have the transform dot position plus equals center. So then we have our if loop. The only difference is we're going to have our if frac complete is greater or equal to one than our start time equals time dot time and then it will loop that way. So that's basically all there is to this. Then you're going to simply go into attach the script onto the cannonball itself because that's the object that we want to actually loop. So we'll attach the script and then we're going to have to have two game objects which I just simply went to create empty game object and I created two empty game objects. I created the start where the cannonball is going to start and then I created where I want to actually land. And you're going to attach those onto the script and then if I actually hit play with it not looped it's just going to shoot once, it's going to hit the ground right there. And then if I hit loop, it's going to start looping. We can actually change the speed. If you want actually to go slower, you'd simply just change the journey length. So there's uh, two there. And there's three. So basically, this is 
uh, A isn't quite on the ground, so it's actually going to curve a bit more towards the cannon near the end of the shot. You can uh, easily fix that by just moving it down into the cannon and getting the angle right for the cannon and everything. Let's check out the other way, which is the hopping enemy that we did. So here is the bouncing enemy script. So the only difference between this script is I don't have the if loop because I didn't want it to loop, I just want it to bounce back and forth. And to do that, we just added the mathf.pingpong into the float frac complete equals. So it would go about uh, right here if you wanted to loop on the cannonball, which I don't think you would want it to. But yeah, so that's the only difference. And then of course you set up your jump position. So I got my point one, point two, you attach your script and then you attach the positions there. And that will give you the ping pong effect for it bouncing back and forth. And the one last thing, like I said, if you wanted to, you can actually change the direction. So this is the Y axis here. And I believe this would be the uh, Z axis maybe, or the, is it the Z? I think it's the Z. So it should be bouncing this way out like it is doing right there. So it's going back and forth on the side. And then you can actually get it going the other way or underneath if you want. And that's how you would change the direction of the curve. And that's all there is to slurp. Uh, you can implement it different ways and use it different ways. I will be getting into those as we continue on with the Action Adventure series. So be sure to follow that series. And if you have any trouble, let me know, comment down below. If you like the video, uh, the tutorial, hit that like button. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.